Right. Keeps you keeps your uh, significant other from throwing like a toaster in the bath and killing her. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> This is the 11th step in our van build series, 120 volt electrical. It is, consists of a 1000 watt inverter, a 120 volt fridge, and a couple outlets. We decided to go with a 120 volt fridge running, running full time off an inverter, mostly for economic reasons because the 12 volt fridges are around 300 to 600 or $800. And we decided to go with a $79 dorm fridge off the of Amazon, running off a $160 inverter. So this is our inverter. It's a pure sine wave, which means that instead of like um, like a modified sine wave where the voltage kind of jumps up increments, this is a nice sinusoidal curve. I recommend you get a pure sine wave inverter because it plays much nicer with um, electronics like laptops and things like that and in our case we're using a 110 volt fridge and that fridge uses an induction motor and induction motors do not play very nice at all with modified sine wave inverters so we have to go with this pure sine wave it's a little bit more expensive about 50 percent more than a cheap uh, modified sine wave but your electronics will run cooler and probably last longer if you get pure sine wave so the pure sine wave is what directly mimics like the grid power that you see in your house this inverter connected to the through the fuse and down to the battery on the positive side and then to the negative post I have here that runs down to the battery through this current shunt and coming out of the inverter on the 110 volt side we have a plug it comes back to here to a inline fuse and this fuse protects the wiring um, most inverters have internal current limiting but I didn't really want to trust that for protecting the 120 volt wiring we have in the van so I have a 15 amp fuse in here I also have the ground wires those green wires right there and they run over to a screw mounted to the sheet metal on the van the ground wires are grounded to the sheet metal of the van, which is essentially the negative terminal. And that's for safety because we're using a GFI breaker. So because we have our inverter mounted in below our bed frame, we need to be able to turn it on remotely. So we installed this remote. Well, and I'll switch for it. But you'll want to use a stranded wire. Um, so I found a good source of that is extension cords. So this is a 16 gauge extension cord rated for up to 15 amps and you want to use stranded wire because if you use like Romex or solid wire like you use in the house it can't stand with the vibration and eventually that solid stranded wire will break and could cause a fire and a high resistance connection. So this outlet right here is the ground fault interrupter and this outlet is daisy chained into the rest of the outlets that go forward by the one by the fridge, the one for the fridge, and the one all the way forward that we use to plug in our laptops when we're driving and stuff like that. So what this does is it monitors the, the ground and if it sees any leakage from the positive or the negative to the ground it kills the circuit. So an example of that would be like if you have like a hair dryer or something like that and then you drop it in the water some of the hot positive will go to the ground and that and this will sense that and kill the circuit. It's the same way it works in your bathroom or your kitchen at home. Because of the daisy chain, I have this one outlet here and that protects the other two outlets which kind of look like regular outlets but because they're daisy chained into this one, they're protected as well. So you only need one of these in your circuit. So we determined that this is the one feed coming from the inverter and this is what's going to go out to the rest of the outlets. So if you look on the back, you probably can't see it in the video, but it says line and then load. So the feed from the inverter is going to go to the line, then the load is 
going to go on to the feed to the rest of the outlets. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button.